we see very clearly that Hashem is running the world and that everything that's happening is happening for a reason, is happening, you know, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu wills it to be happening. And, um, you know, we have to understand that when, when the, these things are happening around us, it's a message for us. There's a message that Kadosh Baruch Hu wants from us. What is it that Hashem wants from me? What is it that Hashem, you know, desires for, for me to be doing right now? And why are these things happening? And the more, you know, I'm hearing the messages, I'm hearing the news, I don't, I try not to look at the news anymore and read the news because it's sometimes very depressing. Um, somehow I find out what the news is, like, no worries, I still know what's going on in the world. And when that happens, you know, we really, it means for us to look inwards, that we have to look inwards, is what is the message that Hashem is trying to tell me? And what is it that Hashem wants me to do? And we have to actually ask these questions of ourselves. And I think that one of the messages that I'm getting is that maybe I'm not doing enough. Maybe I'm not, you know, working on my tefillah enough. Maybe I'm not um, investing in my connection to Hashem enough. And it's not to make us feel guilty, but it's to make us be proactive. And whenever things happen in the world, the messages are for Kla Yisrael. The messages are for me. It says, Bishvili nivra haolam. For me, this world was created. If everybody looks at that, you know, what's happening as messages for themselves, this would be a different world. But oftentimes what we do is, well, you know, look at her and look at him and why is she saying that? And why is he doing that? And, you know, how could she? You know, we often do, we go into judgment and we go into, you know, this, you know, this self, you know, criticism. We go into criticism and we go into judgment of others where we need to self-reflect and we need to ask ourselves, what is it that Hashem wants for me? You know, when things go good, we often say, Lahagid we're so glad things are going good. Bokir is, is the morning. It's a symbol of something bright, of something, you know, of, of uh, you know, good things happening. And we say in the Bokir, in the, in the light, and when things are going right, when things are going so rosy, oh, thank you so much, Hashem. The test is, do we have emuna at night? in the darkness, how are we facing the darkness? How are we looking at what's going on? Are we looking at it in a way that we're thinking, thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem, for the darkness, for the things that are not going so right. Oftentimes we don't, we complain, we criticize, we complain, we look at things in a negative you know, light and, um, and we really don't reflect on maybe this is happening and there is good in this happening. There is something positive that Hashem wills from this happening right now. And maybe that is connection to Hashem. And that connection that we have with Hashem in the darkness, in the darkest part of, of the light, right? And that is the Ben show at the time when the the darkness just begins, right? There's like a time after sunset, before the night falls, that's really the darkest part when we're like not here and we're not there and things are not so clear. And, um, and that time period is, is a time period of uncertainty. It's a time period of difficulty. It's a time period when we know in our life when things are not going my way, when things don't seem like there's going to be any light, when it doesn't seem that there's going to be any light, they don't seem to be going smoothly. And um, 
it's those times, and I can tell you from my own experience, that the time that we're closest really to Hashem, because we're going to be revealing something about ourselves that we might not have gotten a, a glimpse about when things were going right. We might not have gotten an inkling as to what it is we're supposed to be working on. Because when things are not going as straight as, straight as we want them to go in the right path that we think they should go, it's, uh, it's about what we think. <laughs> It's not really about what we think, but that's what we think. You know, when things are not going in the path that we will it to be, we understand that it has to be in Hashem's will. But that sometimes takes a long time for us to understand that that is Hashem's will, that we should be in the darkness. And if you just look around what's going on now with the world, we're in a lot of darkness. We're in a state of uncertainty. We're in a state of not knowing what's going to be tomorrow, who the president's gonna be of the United States of America. What is it that Hashem wants from us? Schools are open, schools are closed, businesses are open, businesses are closed. The corona went down, the numbers went up. There's vaccines, vaccines are good, vaccines are not good. What's this whole world plan that's expected from us? All the things that are happening and they're telling us in the news and there's so much chaos and there's so much uncertainty and there's fear and there's all this, you know, confusion in the world. And when you look at this confusion that's happening in the world, it looks like God's punishing us. It's so bad, it's so evil, it's so horrible. We don't know what's gonna be. Look how people are dying. Look at all the fear, look at all the you know, sickness, look at all the businesses that are closed. What, what's going on? What is it Hashem that you, that you want from us? That's really what we are supposed to be saying. We're not supposed to be we're not supposed to be thinking, oh, Hashem's punishing me. Like that's really the first reaction oftentimes. Why is Hashem doing this to me, right? Why is this happening to me? And if we think that, and if we think that that's the case, chas v'chalila, we go into a place where there's confusion, where there's, Sorry, let me just mute all. Sorry, there's chaos and we fall into the trap of believing that this is punishment, that this is, you know, that there is no Hashem chas v'shalom, that Hashem's not running this world, that, you know, all this negativity. You know, what is it that, I, and we start doubting and we see negative, negative thoughts coming in. And of course the media feeds us all this garbage and we take it in because when we're in a state of chaos and of doubt, what do we do? We succumb to this doubt and we think there's no is not running this world. We think that Hashem is punishing us. And, and we think that oh, if I fall into this trap, you know, if I'm sorry, we don't think of it as a trap, but if I, if I think this way, you know, this is what, I, not even that this is what Hashem wants. It's like, it's easy for me to think this way we don't even understand that this is the yetzer hara. This is the sitra achra, the other side that tries to get us to fail, that tries to get us to, to believe that there's nothing positive in everything that's happening to me and all the negativity and all the sickness and all the, all the schmutz that's happening around me and all the doubt that there is. We think, ach, 
this is what Hashem wants. Hashem wants that I shouldn't live. Hashem wants that this world should end. Hashem wants that, you know, that there's no, there's no good. There's no more good. I'm, I'm serious right now because there are people that are thinking this way. And maybe some of you think I'm crazy. But this world is coming to, you know, to a, you know, a very sad place of people feeling that they don't even feel anymore. They don't even know what it means to feel anymore. You know, people doubting themselves. And, um, you know, people are not believing in themselves. We don't believe in the power that we have. We don't believe in the power of love and the power of emuna, of faith. What does it mean? Lahagid ba boker chastecha veemunatcha ba lelo. David the Melech said this, and we actually say this every Shabbos in the Mizmor Shir leYom Shabbat. This is the Shir that David the Melech sang. It's the Shir about Adam Rishon. We think about it, Adam Rishon, where you know all all uh, curses, all negativity. It all started, and and um, and you would think, like, what, what is he saying? What we're trying to, what we we should try to understand is that it's not a curse. Like, you know, even the curse that Adam and Rishon got, yeah, it's a curse, but there's a tachlit, there's a purpose to the curse. Right? There was a purpose to Hashem punishing him. If you want to look at his punishment, the consequence that Hashem gave him, you know, that he, you know, he should not live forever anymore. And that, um, you know, and that, I'm sorry, just one second. Should not live forever anymore. And that he, you know, and that he should work. And, and what we're supposed to be doing, we have to, you know, we have a fashat chala, we have all the mitzvot of the woman, because it, we're supposed to be, you know, emulating and, and bringing Hashem's oneness into this world by fixing, by fixing. And guess what? We're not here just to bask in the goodness. We're here to be metaken something, this something Hashem wants from us. And if we look at it as an achrayut, as a responsibility, that what's happening around me is for me and is because of me. Not that you should be knocking yourself down, that you're horrible, but there's so much potential that you have to actualize that maybe you're not doing. And maybe if I do this one more act of goodness, and if I have the the emuna that I'm supposed to have. And I, if I work on this emuna, or I work on my gratitude, I work on my Ahavat Yisrael, then I'm going to be able to build the world and to cause the, the not the destruction, but the building of the next Beit HaMikdash. Because all the while that we're here, you know, we're in Chodesh, um, we're in Chodesh Kislev, and the next month is Chodesh Tevet. And in Tevet, we commemorate one of the fast days that we have is for the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash. And in this commemoration, we're, you know, we're, we're remembering that the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed and all the while that the Beit HaMikdash is not built, that we have a chayut and responsibility to do something about it. It says in every generation that the Beit HaMikdash is not built. It's as if we destroyed it. Chas v'shalom. If that's the case, if we're still here and still Chorban, there's something still that I need to fix. There's something still that I need to do. I'm sorry if I'm speaking strongly a little bit, but I feel that we all, including myself, need to be fixing something, working on something, improving something. And it's not going to be everything because we're not Malachim, we're not angels. And we're not supposed to be angels. And we're here to be able to elevate 
we're here to be able to bring the world to its fruition, to bring the world to its tachli, to its purpose. We as the Jewish people, especially as the Jewish women, have such an incredible, incredible responsibility. We have such an incredible, you know, awareness of what's going on. And if we look at everything that's happening in the world as for me, Bishvili, I have an achrayut. I have an awesome responsibility. I can accomplish. I can build. I can do. And if I look at it in that way, you don't understand what we will do. You don't understand what will, will happen in this world. And um, I'm meeting so many amazing people. Some of them are big people that maybe in the limelight, you know, you see they, they do tremendous chesed and they're involved in organizations and they're giving shiurim. And then I'm meeting these young, you know, kids. They're not kids, they're in their twenties, but they want to gravitate and connect to something bigger. You know, I was just, uh, I went to a, an event here in Bet Shemesh and I wasn't sure where it was and I got a little bit lost in the streets and I end up in like uh, the back of like a warehouse of warehouses. And um, I meet these kids, these uh, young, young men, I should say, and they're with a caravan. They're Breslov uh, boys. They're blasting like, you know, Jewish Breslov music. And I'm like, where are you from? We're from a lot. Like, wow, a lot. Everybody wants to go to a lot. You know, that's like uh, Florida <laughs> of Israel. And like my aunt just went on vacation there. I'm like, you're in a, in a lot. You live in a lot and you're coming here to Bet Shemesh. Like, what brings you here? They're like, yeah, no, you know, like, it's like, you know, how much could you vacation? It's, it's too much. It's, you know, it's all right. There's nothing happening there. You know, we're looking for something else. We wanted to come see what's out here. And um, what is the message really I'm hearing? The message I'm hearing is we want to be connected to something higher. There's not enough ruchniyut there. There's a little bit too much of the gashmiyut you know, of the physicality. That's what one of them said to me. He's like, yeah, it's like a resort place. You know, people come to vacation. How much could you vacation? I said, come on, you must have a shul. You must have a rabbi, the shulim. He's like, yeah, yeah, we have a great rabbi. He said, we came, there's a big convention of Breslov in Hebron and we wanted to come and, and be there. Again, they're gravitating towards the spirituality. So these are younger people, people not in the limelight, but they want to belong to something. One of them said to me, you know, I wanted to leave Israel. Uh, you came from America. I want to go to America. How come you came here? You know, I, I want to be here. I want to be there. I said, no, you don't want to be there. This is the place to be. He's like, you know what? And he, I recorded him on, on my Aliyah Inspiration group. I'm like, he says, there's nothing like our, our land. You know, as much as you want the Gashmiut, you want to go out there, you want to see what's in the world, he still loves his own land. He still feels a belonging, you know, wanting the connection of Ruchniyut, of the spirituality. And um, there are other people that I'm meeting. It's like incredible. And, and they just... There's just a thirst and of a desire to be connected to something higher, to be connected to something that has purpose and that has meaning. And I feel so fortunate to be in Eretz HaKodesh, to be in Israel, in the land of the holy, where every single place you go has meaning and significance. And I know some of you desire to be here and you would be here if you could. And Bezrat Hashem, I give you all a bracha that you should be here very, very soon. You should get here very soon, Bezrat Hashem. Berachamim gedolim. And just keep davening for it. Hashem will make it happen.
but I'm, I'm saying this because I feel it and I see it that there's, there's a love and a connection to our land because it has spirituality. And in America, as much as I try to find it, as much as I try to create it, as much as I try to belong to something, it was always like so hard to connect. And I know some of you know what I'm talking about. It was just hard to connect. It was just hard to like, to be connected. You wanna go daven with Kavan. It's like, you have to find like an ocean, you know, for some of you are closer to the ocean, so you're lucky. You have to find like, you know, some, you go to the Rebbe's caver, you know, the Ohel, the Lubavitcher Rebbe's, uh, um, you know, burial place, you know, and, and that's a holy site. If you want to dab in, you know, that's a very special place to be. And Chazde Hashem, it was to be there many times. You know, you, you find places where you can connect and you can get, you know, your Kavana, you know, and your davening. And it's still hard to stay connected. Whereas here, you're attached to something higher. You're attached to something, to, to, the, to the places that are connected spiritually just by the virtue of who they are, where they are, you know, of where they are and who's been there. And, and you're part of that. You're part of that. I mean, why does the entire world want to um, to the Western Wall to Davin, because it has tremendous, tremendous uh, power of of spirituality. Makom Hakikadosh, the holiest of holies. That's where it was. So, um, I'm not trying to make you jealous, <laughs> but I am telling you that even though it's hard to connect. Even though you're in the place of exile of Galut, and it says that everybody is in their own exile, so to speak, right? When you haven't found your purpose, your meaning, you're not, you're always searching. It's a type of exile. But you have the ability to make that connection and to attach yourself to the spirituality by what you do, by your tefillah by your divine consciousness, if you connect in your mind, in your heart to a higher source, which we all do to connect to Hashem, if we meditate and we daven and we do it bodadut, we're connecting ourselves to a higher source and we all have to find time to talk to Hashem. We all have to make time to talk to Hashem. Rav Shimshin Pinkus, Allah Shalom, said that davening does not require a sitter. Davening is a relationship with the Kaddish Baruch Hu. It's a relationship with the holiest of holies, with the, but he is also our, it says, Avinu Malkeinu. He's first our father and then he's our king. It's the one that has the closest relationship with us. But it's how we connect to him, to enable heaven, and what is davening? What does daven mean? Daven is de'avuhun. They twisted the word. Everyone uses it like a verb. We're davening. I'm going to daven, which means I'm going to pray. But it really doesn't mean that. The word, the word daven, when I taught tefillah, I saw this in the Sefer. I forgot which Sefer it was. Maybe it was Rabbi Kersner. He has an amazing book on, on tefillah, The Art of Jewish Prayer. He wrote a book, Rabbi Yitzchak Kersner, Shalom, with Lisa Eichen. Incredible book. It says, Dav, I think he says it, davening comes from the word de'avohun. De'avohun means of the fathers. Of the fathers means that the source of tefillah, of davening, comes from our forefathers, from Avraham, from Yitzhak, and from Yaakov, from Sarah, Rikka, Rachel, and Le'a, all the avot and the imahot. And we look in, in the parashiyot and then in Sefer Bereshit, Right in the creation of the world, the entire sefer of the of of uh, Genesis is all the fathers and mothers, and those were the ones that established prayer. Now take a look at why they established prayer. It's not because they opened up a sitter. 
It's not because they had a formal, you know, text to, to, to daven from. It's actually because they had a lack. They had something they were missing. They had something that they needed. They had something that they wanted to be connected to that they were not getting. And they kept asking and talking to Hashem and asking and talking and asking and talking. Sarah for 90 years, Avram for 100 years. And Rivka, I think she was barren. I don't remember right now because I'm forgetting my, my text, but she was also barren for a number of years, over 20 years. And, and, and Rachel as well. And look at Rachel, she, until she had a child, until she got her husband, until she had a child, every single thing was like an, another tefillah and another tefillah and another yearning. And Leah, she had children, then she stopped having children. She, want, she thought she was going to marry Esav. She got to marry Yaakov. And then Yaakov didn't even want her. And so she cried and she davened and she cried and she davened. And look what she got. She got Yaakov. She got the Shvatim to be born to her. Not pashut, all these things. It's not a simple thing. We read it and we think it's like a storybook, you know? You read to your son and your daughter. You know, once was a man and there was for the lady and they couldn't have children. And then they prayed and they had a child. 90 years. Ninety years to pray. It says about Sarah. They were all equal. What? What are you talking about? How could all of her years be equal? Because all of her years she dedicated to Avodat Hashem, to serving a Kadosh Baruch Hu, to serving Hashem with a tremendous umph, with a tremendous ability to serve him with emuna. And what do we do? I didn't find, you know, the man of my dreams. I lose hope. I didn't find the house that I wanted. Where's Hashem? I didn't get what I asked for. I don't have Panasal. How many years am I going to ask for it? How many years am I going to daven? How many, how many times am I going to ask Hashem? Oh, enough already. Look what's happening in the world. Why is this happening? How could this be happening to me? I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I don't have koach to daven so much. How much do you want me to daven, Hashem? Again? Again? Single for 25, 35, 40 years? I can't have a child? 10 years? 15 years? Enough. I'm done. And unfortunately, this is a sad story of many people that have lacks in their life. And you know who those people are? Us. It's not only her and him and she and they. Each one of us have something we're lacking, something we're missing. What are we doing with the lacks? How do we present ourselves to Hashem when we're lacking? And I can tell you that you can fall into the darkest place and you can go into that place and be so alone. I'm talking from experience because I've been there, done that. You can be so alone thinking that nobody cares about me. Nobody's calling me. Nobody knows what I'm going through, right? And then what do we do? Where is Hashem? Why is Hashem doing this to me? Why do I have to go through this? Why is this happening to me? How come she has it like that and I have to have it like this? And we go into this self-doubt and self-criticism and doubt of Hashem and, and, and disconnecting ourselves from others and not believing that we're going to get our Yeshua and not believing that things are going to get better. And I can't imagine if I could take a poll now that not one person here would say that this is true. Because everybody has something that they are missing at certain points in their life. And Baruch Hashem, if you've gone through the hump and you're now at the stage that you can look back and say, I'm so proud of myself. 
that Baruch Hashem, now I have a Muna and I have gratitude and I'm not in that place anymore. I think that's, that's incredible and you all should pat yourselves on the back. But no one has a guarantee and no one knows what tomorrow will bring. And what we need to do is to, you know, like when you go into the army, you need to prepare your ammunition. When Yaakov Avinu went to meet Esav, he made sure to prepare for war. He separated the camps. He went and he, you know, sent a peace treaty to Esav. He went and he prayed to Hashem. He prepared. He didn't just say, oh, thank you, Hashem, that you're doing this to me. He didn't just say that. But he understood that there is, you know, that, that he needs to prepare, that he can't just rely on Hashem. And even if he prayed, it's not enough. And yeah, he's Yaakov Avinu, but it's not enough to just do your, to just make, you know, to just say, oh, I, I prayed, I did my duty. We have to be able to understand that I need to prepare. I need to prepare and stock up, you know, the storage houses and to understand that if I don't stock up, if I don't start praying more, if I don't invest in my tefillah more, learn about my tefillah more, understand that I, I have to put in something to prepare for what's coming tomorrow, to prepare and to thank Hashem now, because Baruch Hashem now, this is where I'm at and it's not worse. And thank you Hashem for another day. And thank you Hashem that I'm healthy. And yes, I have aches and pains. And yes, I'm suffering from this and from that. And yes, I don't have money. And yes, I don't have the business that I wanna have. And I don't have that child. And I'm not married and I'm divorced. And whatever lack that you have, thank you Hashem, because it really probably could be even worse than this. And thank you Hashem, because Baruch Hashem, now I have it good. I don't know what's gonna to be tomorrow. Thank you Hashem for tomorrow. Thank you Hashem that we're gonna be able to serve you and be in the Beit HaMikdash and be, you know, greeting Mashiach. And that's a Muna. And that's a Yehudi. What is a Yehudi? Come from the word, comes from the word Chodaya. Thanking. Thanking Hashem. Believing that there's another day and that there's hope. And no matter what they're saying in the news and no matter who's the president, Hashem is running this world. And thank you, Hashem, for everything you're giving to me because it's like a gift. It's a gift, matnat chinam, a free gift. A free gift. Do I deserve it? I don't deserve it, Hashem. And when we're in this mode of the hodaya, of the gratitude, we push away that sitra acha, we push away that negativity, and we understand that there's a higher force that's running this world. Now, is this easy? No. Is this something that comes naturally? No. The nature of a person is to see the bad. The nature of a person is to think negatively. And why is this happening? And why are you doing this to me? And why do I have to go through this? And it's so hard and it's so painful. And only I have to go through this and nobody understands what I'm going through. And these are statements that I hear people saying and these are statements that I myself said and these are normal statements. And what we have to do is change the norm. And the norm has to be for every little smallest, silliest thing, thank you, Hashem. And if it wasn't clear enough that we lost so many souls and that this plague is hitting every single neighborhood, it's crazy what's going on. And it's crazy and we have to think it's crazy and we should not think this is normal. And we have to daven our kishkas out. And we have to say thank you Hashem for every little thing that's happening. That I have money in my pocket today, thank you Hashem. That I have food on my table, thank you Hashem. That I'm able to go to the store, thank you Hashem. That I'm able to walk on my two feet, thank you Hashem. And we can't take for granted the smallest little things today. 
And we have to be in such a state of simcha and of gratitude to Hashem. And there's challenging times. These are challenging, challenging times. And I'll share with you. I was an older single girl. And I went with two of my older single friends who were even older than me. I didn't think I was so old. But whatever. In the term older single girl, I was older. But my friends were even older than I am. And uh, I said, let's go for, get a bracha. We were in, uh, in a seminary together. Actually, it was a post-seminary program. And we, we said, let's, let's, uh, let's go get a bracha. And it was Rav Rafael Levine. Alava Shalom He was the the Rav in living in uh, near Machane Yehuda. He was the son of Rav Arya Levine. If you haven't read the book A Tzaddik in Our Times, incredible book. He was a tzaddik that lived in Yerushalayim. He would go visit prison houses. He would go visit orphanages. He would go visit uh, almanot widowers. Tremendous person. And this was his son. And he was elderly already at the time. His father passed away. And we went to see him. And it was actually like mazal. We went to Machan Yehuda looking for him. And he was just leaving the shul. And we met him. You know, we came face to face, to face with him. And we asked him, you know, please give us a bracha. I said, what do you need a bracha for? So we're older singles. And we want a bracha to find our bashert. And if, of course, he gave us a bracha. And my friend, you know, she had a little more chutzpah and she was like, can the Rav maybe tell us some, some uh, etza, some advice? You know, what, what can we do? And, you know, she's waiting for like this magical answer, you know, like, what is he going to tell her already? And he says to her, it says, Kavel Hashem. Some of you know the song, Kavel Hashem, Chazak ve'ametz libecha. Hashem. What does Kavel Hashem mean? Kavel Hashem means hope to Hashem. It's another word of tefillah. Le kavot, it's like a kav. Kav is a direct line. We have a direct line to Kadesh Baruch Hu. We have to hope and pray to Hashem. And then it says, strengthen your heart. Chazak ve'ametz libecha. Ve'kavel Hashem and pray to Hashem. Why is it repeating itself? He had already said, pray to Hashem. Strengthen your heart and pray to Hashem. So he said, this is a, a Musala skin. This is a lesson for life. And this is an elderly man, probably in his 80s at the time. And he, he, he went through a lot. His father went through a lot. And he said to us, nobody can just pray. Nobody can just pray and pray. And be in the same place and just say, oh, yay, great. Thank you, Hashem. You know, everyone has struggle. Everyone has hardship. Everyone has doubts. And our job is chazak ve'ametz libecha. Strengthen yourself. Believe in what you're asking for. And believe in the one that's going to give it to you. V'kavel Hashem and pray again. And the reason we have... Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, we daven, Eloke Avraham, Eloke Yitzchak, Eloke Yaakov. Every time you say those words, you know what you're saying? In the merit of Avraham, the God of Avraham. He's not only called God, it's called the God of Avraham, the God of Yitzchak, the God of Yaakov. How could those people merit that they should be called together with the name of Hashem? You know how? Because they had tremendous emuna, And they acted out of chesed. They acted out of gevura. They acted out of emet. Tiferet. The midot. The three amazing midot that this world stands upon. The kindness. Right? That Abraham represented. The gevura. The discipline. That Yitzchak represented. And the tiferet. The beauty that Yaakov represented 
which is the combination of the chesed and the gevura of Avram Midot that they represented. And who are the Aminim? They were believers, the sons of believers. And of course, the first one was Avraham Avinu. And we, you know who we are? We are their children. We are the children of Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. We are the children of Hashem. Eloke Avraham, Eloke Yitzchak, Eloke Yaakov. Each one of the times that we say, we say this in the Amidah, because that is who we are. We are their children. Those are the merits that we have. We have the merits of believers, of Maminim. And we have to hold on so tightly right now to that emuna and that belief. And Davin again, and Davin again, and believe it and Davin again, even when we don't get answered or even when the answer is not the answer that we want. And even if we're not feeling so great, and even if we didn't get the zivug that we wanted, and even if we're not in the home that we wanted, and even if we are suffering in whatever capacity that we're suffering, because everybody has some sort of suffering and I'm not minimizing anybody's suffering. We have to be believers. We have no one to rely upon. We only have Avinu Shabashamaim, our Father in heaven. And if we understand that that is a gift we don't take for granted and we say thank you Hashem and we continue to believe that Hashem put me here during this time of COVID-19 in the year 2020 in the year that there's so much doubt and the year that there's so much suffering and how could this be happening because Hashem wants something from me what is it? Ask Hashem. Listen to your inner voice. Listen to the voice that Hashem puts inside of you and understand that you and I have a tremendous responsibility, that we have a responsibility to bring Mashiach. We can bring the Mashiach just with our emunah and our koach of tefillah. And if we really believe in our tefillah, if we really believe in the power that we have to understand that everything that's happening in this world is for a purpose, is for a reason, is for me to make a change that's going to lift up this heaviness and this sickness and what's happening in the world is going to be able to be fixed at a certain point because what I just did made a, made a, made a difference. And when we, you know, we talk about divine consciousness meditation, when we go into the power of the mind, there's nothing there's nothing that can take that away from us. We not only will be affecting ourselves, we're going to be affecting thousands and thousands of people around the world. When you focus on the power of Ahava and of Emuna, you have an effect. It's like a ripple effect when you throw the pebble into the water, right? The ripples. And the waves that are affected, you can't even count. They just go on and 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 on. And that's what the power that we have. We have the power to just put in a tefillah, to put it in our mindset, to work on our muna, to work on our belief system, to work on our gratitude. And when we do that, we up the ante of other people all around the world. And yes, right? the world was created for me. But we know that Klal Yisrael, Arevim Zelazeh, we're all equal. We're all responsible for one another. When one part of the body aches, the whole entire body is aching. And if we understand that when we do something, we'll have an effect on our body, 
on the klal, on Am Yisrael. What a achrayut, what a responsibility. But if we look at it as just a responsibility and we think it's just the all, and we think it's just like weights on our shoulders, you know, then we might want to absolve ourselves from it. And we should look at it instead as a gift from Hashem. It's a gift from Hashem. Hashem gave me a gift. And this gift cannot be replaced. Hashem gave it to me. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem, that I'm here. Thank you, Hashem, that I'm part of Am Yisrael. When you say, Shelo Asani Goy, Shelo Asani Eved, Shasani Kirtzono, when you say your brachas every morning, Pokeach Ivrim, Malbisha Rumim, thank you, Hashem, for giving us the koch, the ability to serve you. And with this, we're going to end. We have Chaya Sarah here. It looks like she's ready for us to do beautiful meditation to take us into this place of connecting to the power of gratitude to Hashem, of connecting to the higher source of us being able to connect with all other Jews around the world in our mindset. And we can affect change just in this way. And especially here together, there's a small group of us. More people are going to be listening to this, hopefully, Bezat Hashem, and we'll connect as well. But for now, even one person, even one person, it says one person is an entire world, even one person, but especially all you amazing women that are here can affect change. And so I welcome you to join us. Chaya Sara. Thank you all for joining, by the way. Miriam Yerushalmi Tzadikis is here. Miriam, say hi if you can. Before we start our meditation, Chaya Sarah is getting ready for our meditation. We're going to do divine consciousness meditation. Miriam, do you, are you able to unmute? Hi. Tzadikis. Thank you. I'm so happy to be connected here again. It's been a while. It's been a whirlwind. I love you all. Mwah. I'm actually on the first like moment to go get things. My phone kind of cracked and it's not working so perfectly. So I'm on my way out to get it fixed. But uh, so happy that I could hear your beautiful words. Oh, gosh, the world should hear you. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Love hearing you all. So I'm so happy you came on. Good to see your face. Thank you. I appreciate you. you being here. And we got to do we something together. Know. Let's do something for Hanukkah together. Let's plan something for Hanukkah. All right, there's Rata Hashem. I really wanted to do um, something on relationships for a while now. It's just I was doing winter camp for the whole week. It was so intense, you know, juggling clients and doing full time from like 8.30 in the morning to like 4 camp. And oh my gosh, <laughs> it was I just amazing. want to know, like, when do you eat? When do you drink? When do you sleep? like what's the story like you're always doing for the cloud <laughs> look who's talking i'll ask you too the same thing <laughs> i actually oh, just okay. ate before this okay i went out to get myself something to eat so i ate <laughs> oh, Hashem. Oh, Hashem. well by, by the way it's very exciting my oh i should show it to you before i hope they're not going to knock on the door and say where are you but like um baruch hashem the uh, health book for children is is the say say what it's called oh it's called um yehuda gets fit it's um baruch hashem everything that we did on the health summit like pretty much condensed in a story form uh this little boy goes on a uh, uh a journey with the health counselor uh, and just Baruch Hashem learns like everything that we learned in the health summit. Remember, like how important it is uh, all the different aspects of healing and uh, you know eating properly, not overeating, and how to like really lessen and then you know. Uh, but since you're talking about prayer, I, I could say something that you know prayer has everything to do with eating right. You know because so fascinating. If you look at Kunjusumayan, it actually says that there's holy sparks in everything. So we're very like drawn toward physical things because there's so much holy sparks that our body wants it. It wants to ingest it. It wants to own it. It wants to wear it. You know, like no matter how many shoes we have or how many, it's like, because there's so much holy sparks. So the Rebbe Rashab actually says in food, there's holy sparks. 
and the the body is drawn to these holy sparks and if you um especially born with a lot of water element which is like the pleasure seeking type of personality and and is drawn toward pleasure you know to kind of pacify the war that's going inside of you um then you're more prone to overeat or over shop or you know and all these addictions so if you are noticing you're so drawn to the physical for pleasure then you you can realize that you need to up the ante and upgrade your prayer and learning service to get those sparks from the books and from the teachings and from your prayers and so that like that then you're not as thirsty for the other pleasures of the world so when you satiate your body with the holy sparks of the letters you know each letter oh my gosh you, it goes up to Shemaim and it becomes like a crown for Hashem's crown. And from that crown beams down like such blessings. And so it's such a nourishing spark that you're ingesting when you pray. It's such a nourishing ingestion of holy sparks when you learn. So, so the more you do that service of the day, the praying and the learning, then the more you're not as easily drawn to the extra sparks that you don't need. So basically, if you're, you know, seeing that you're so uncontrollably eating or uncontrollably addicted to things, then the more you end up kind of making analysis, wow, so that means I'm a higher soul, I might need to have a higher nutrition from not just an average davening, I have to do more meditation and davening, I have to do more learning, maybe I have to be more mindful and, and gathering these more sparks from my high soul so that I won't be so thirsty that I get it from elsewhere. Anyway, so just something I think, is that Esther? Who is that, that I'm seeing? Nice to meet you all. Hi. You? <laughs> Hi, sorry. Yeah. Um... Okay, so my I would love to do this meditation. We'll see how it goes and how quiet my son is. I'm in the car and he's like in a karate class. So um, <laughs> we're just going to go with the flow. <laughs> but I really want to bring down um, okay. a beautiful class. Okay. okay. All right, let me see if this will work. One second. Okay. Okay. So just put your, um, we're going to just ground yourself and feel the chair or whatever you're sitting on, like beneath you. Um, our body is very holy, as we were just saying, and um, it's the house of our neshama. So feel the surface um beneath you and you could put your hands or one hand on your lower stomach and just feel your breath going in and out. Your breath is a connection as well to your source. Hashem is giving us our breath each moment and we can feel grateful to be alive. Just our existence in the world shows that we have value and a purpose. And now, um, if you're comfortable, you could close your eyes. If not, you can keep them open, whatever works for you. Um, we're just gonna go through your body doing like a body scan. And with this body scan, um, we're going to just imagine like a source of light, kind of like either like Hashem's power to you or energy, vitality, gratitude, and like kind of like coming from like the top of your head, your crown, and just filling up your your head, the whole part of your head, your scalp, your eye sockets, your jaw, going down the back of your neck, the sides of your shoulders, any point that this light touches just brings relaxation 
gratefulness for that part of your body and how it works and all the miraculous wisdom inside your body to heal itself. Going down your shoulders, the light splits and goes down one arm and the other arm with the simultaneously. Down your upper arms, your forearms, into your hands and wrists, your thumb, forefinger, ring finger, or middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. Then going down your heart center, allowing your heart to open. Feel grateful for something that happened today or in your life. That the world was created for you, that Hashem is giving this specifically for you in your life. To just open and appreciate Hashem's kindnesses to you. Going down your spine, all the vertebrae down your spine, to your stomach. Feeling your stomach fill with air a little bit more. Grateful for your digestion. Thankful for your body. Going down your pelvis, your upper legs. Gratitude is going down your knees and your lower calves into your ankles, heels, your feet, your big toe second toe, third toe, fourth toe, and fifth toe. Now just feeling your whole body at once and the power of your unique neshama that you bring to the world, your special light that only you can give. Mm. Now feel within the side yourself. Just one area that you feel like you can connect to Hashem in a more real relationship in your life. Whatever comes is great. Whether it's a tefillah, a certain tefillah or a action but it's your special connection with just between you and Hashem. It doesn't have to be shared with anyone. It's nice. I learned for my son. Um, think about that one. Just gonna carry on. And as you're thinking about that, um, go into this um, place that we were speaking about of the, the darkness that is um, either in your personal life or uncertainty, kind of like the thick of the darkness. You could feel it a little bit and feel all the things that the emotions that come around with it you just watch them like you're watching a movie almost like you were an outsider to that experience of pain and challenge or the world world's pain and if you were an outsider looking in on this in your life or the world 
what would you say that you or the world was growing in? How was it connecting to Hashem more through this experience? What traits is Hashem building in you? What traits is Hashem building in the world? The whole world is like a womb. We're in Hashem's womb. And there's a point in the pregnancy when the baby is born. And that labor process is not pleasant, but we know that there is a baby at the end. We know that there's Geula. Someone could go through labor and the pain and be confused and say, why is this happening to me? And forget that there's a baby there, forget that there's redemption at the end, or they could go through every piece of the pain and say, this is bringing my baby. This is bringing redemption. This is bringing connection to Hashem through this. And just breathe and work through it with love. knowing that Hashem is our loving Father. He is only there for our good. His kind, he, only His kindness, that's it. We just don't understand, it's okay. So just feel how this challenging experience could have a small aspect more of Hashem's chesed or kindness to yourself through this. that kindness and the love, you could imagine your own personal gaula. Actually, just take a breath in and release all the negativity. Through your breath out, if there's anything left. And then when you're ready, you could imagine your, your personal gaula or the world's personal gaula full color, what that looks like to you, that vision, that picture. What it feels like with the people around you, with yourself, the house you're in, the parnasa you're making, your ideal marriage, your children, your connection to Hashem, Seeing all the good that you did through the through your pain, all the work that you did, that you see back at it, and what results that it made for the world. And the base of Mikdash and what that feels like for the Jewish unity. And obviously Israel. the downfall of any evil. Just goodness, only basking in Hashem's goodness to you and to the world, that this is the end of a long exile, which we are 216 years away from when the time that Mashiach has to come by. And it could come sooner. Hashem brings us out sooner. Just see this vision. I thank Hashem for anything else that you have now. Personal gratitudes.
Thanking Hashem almost from the other side. Thank you, Hashem, for the journey. Thank you for all the pain. Thank you. Because it was all good. When you're ready, you can just fill your seat again beneath you. In your breath. Coming back into the present moment. Taking any insights with you into your day. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> Beautiful, so special. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much. That was, whew. <laughs> we need to land. <laughs> that was so special. Thank you so much. And you, know, you had to go um, get your son. It's so special of you to um, to do this for us. And it was so best shared that you were here. Uh, Ahavi wasn't able to join us. And um, I feel very, you know, very grateful right now. And everything you were saying was so true is that Hashem, everything Hashem gave us and gives us, even the pain was, is for our good. And we have to feel that gratitude and, you know, coming from a, a place where, you know, it was very hard to see and to be in gratitude. And now to look back, and to say publicly, thank you, Hashem, that I'm able to be here and I'm, I'm able to, uh, you know, to see that that what I thought was really bad is really for my good. And that I'm able to say that and publicly talk about it and maybe help other people with it. And that sometimes what we go through is to, for us to help maybe other people and and for us to appreciate much more what we have. And so I am in gratitude that, you know, I'm able to share this with you and that I have people here that are incredible that also went through their journey and Chayasar was with us, you know, with, with me in, in the redemption school. And uh, Baruch Hashem, she's able to share with you as well. So here we are, and I want to allow anybody who wants to share right now, you want to share with us. Carol says, there are no words describing the awesomeness of this meditation. And um, Priscilla says, thank you. Um, Carol, the Redemption School, Rivka Malka, if you heard of Rivka Malka Perlman, she has uh, the coaching school of... Uh, called the redemption transformational coaching and she's really an incredible person um so she i, I did her coaching class coaching course and her you know i joined with the ladies other coaches and we sort of coached each other and you forged relationships for Hashem through that so um did you have to go to baltimore yeah you know if Kamaka, did it online it was now during you know, actually during Corona, it was an online school. And so we had Zooms once a week. And uh, initially we were meeting once uh, at the end of a semester, like, but then it was not, we couldn't meet again because it was during uh, COVID. So we, we did it virtually. <clears throat> it was very, very special. Um, you could still join. Rivka Malka has a uh, davening uh, group that you can listen to on YouTube. Um, it's every Wednesday at two o'clock from two to two thirty, approximately. And um, you know, if you go on uh, website rifkamalka um, dot com, or you can go on her YouTube rifkamalka Perlman, um, you'll see it's um, posted there. Her previous ones, she had one today, and you can join weekly at two o'clock. Sounds like um, you live. know. It sounds Sorry? like the two of, 
it sounds like the two of you got so much out of that. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely, she's a very, very special person. But listen to the davening group, it's very special. They do a meditation at the end also. Um, and okay. She always talks about something very interesting. You could probably, the one from today is probably up. She, she put, puts it up on YouTube. You wanna share anything, Carol? No, it was just so beautiful. The meditation was magnificent, Karen. It was really Perfect. very healing, very, very healing. Hi, Sarah left already. We got to tell her, Mr. Shah, I'm going to text her. She actually does um, meditation. She has a group. I don't know. She has something that she was asking me for, you know, my meditation. She's trying to, you know, get, get them all together. And, and I don't know what she does exactly, but she also does um, these meditations. I'm going to find out and we'll post it, God willing. Um, I want to share with you, ladies. I didn't post it yet in Love Ha'am, but I'm going to be speaking. Unfortunately, you won't be able to be there live. Um, it's going to be Motzei Shabbat here um, in Israel at um, 8 o'clock with the uh, Orit Esther writer. She's very, very special. But I will try very hard to set up a, a Zoom um, and record it so that I can share with you afterwards. It's going to be an evening of inspiration and song. We're having a, an amazing singer also afterwards. And... Um, God willing, it's going to be a very special evening. I hope, God willing, everything works out with the connection and we'll be able to record it. I should actually test it out tomorrow <laughs> so that everything, you know, works out. The, the connection here is not so good in certain areas because some areas are newer than other areas. So, um, unfortunately, we don't always get, like, I'm very grateful right now that you're still able to hear me after so long because my connection goes in and out. I don't know if it did while I was talking. But sometimes it shows me unstable. So um, depending on where you are, it sometimes happens. So I sat in one place and I was davening that I would stay on and thank God you're still here and you still hear me, right? <laughs> perfect. Just perfect. 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 Okay. Wonderful. So I'm glad you enjoyed, Carol. And Ms. Hashem will be doing this um, hopefully weekly. I might be starting a series um, very soon. I'm going to keep you guys posted. Where did you see, uh, which group are you on that you saw me post now? You're on the same Le group? Um, the oh, you're on um, the Le Okay, great. So I'm going to be posting. I'm going to start a series. Hopefully, um, we'll be learning together through. Uh, on Tvila. On Tvila. Yeah, I want to do it oh. on <laughs> I think it's your calling, Karen. Uh, <laughs> you should know. When I was teaching, I taught high school, that was like my favorite thing to teach was about tefillah. And I was never able to really teach it, you know, like the way I wanted to. I was always like teaching the basics of the basics. And then one year, like they asked me to teach Mishle, um, which is Shlomo HaMelech, so, you know, they're like sayings of Shlomo HaMelech, Proverbs. And it was so amazing. And then they taught, they asked me to teach um, Maybe they didn't even ask me. I think I, I asked to teach Tehillim. So I took like the Tehillims that I wanted and I I taught from, you know, from the Tehillim. So it was very special for me because I actually got to teach a little bit more than the, the basics, you know, which is always like the Birkasa Shachar, you know, like the meaning of the words just at the beginning, a little bit of Shemona Esrei, but I was teaching at a cure of high school. So I wasn't able to really give it my all and go in depth. And uh, thank God I'm... I'm I'm, I'm grateful that I'm able to do that right now. And there's a safer that I always wanted to go in depth and teach from Rav Shem Shem Pincus. It's called the Gates of Jewish Prayer, the Gates of Prayer, sorry. Um, it's called Sha'arim Betfila in Hebrew. And if you can get a hold of the book, it's going to be amazing. Do they have and, it in English? Is it English too? Yeah, the, the Gates of Prayer. I think I might have it here. Is it accessible? Uh, I don't see it right now. But, um, okay, I'll look for it. It's Rabbi Pincus. Cover. It's Rabbi Pincus. Yeah, he has he has a few books, and um, this one's on Tefillah. Okay. Um, does anybody else want to say hi and pop in and say something? We lost Priscilla. Hi, Sarah had to go off. Um, Ari, Orly, you want to say anything? I don't know who iPhone is. Hi, iPhone, and hi, Lorraine. Anybody want to say anything before we hop off? 
This is Adi. Just thank you. And I can't wait for the next meeting. Yay. Thank you. Do you want to say anything you're grateful for? Share something with us. I'm grateful for you and every woman in this group. I am just grateful that Hashem has brought us all together in this season. It's the perfect timing. Amen. Likewise. Yes. I also, you know, mm -hmm. say the same for all these amazing women that I'm meeting and that I'm, you know, really um, inspired by. So I thank you for being here and for joining us. Anyone else want to share a gratitude or a thought or introduce yourself? No pressure. Okay, so I'm glad you all were able to join me. For those that are listening to the recording, thank you for listening to the recording and we hope to see you again, Bezlat Hashem, next week. This Motzei Shabbat is a very special time. It is the birthday of Hasidut. This is when um, the altar, the older Lubavitcher Rebbe was freed from prison. Um, I'll probably be posting something on it in our group. And so um, it's a special time. It's called Fabrengen when the, the Hasidim, they get together and they have like a, a celebration. Rabbi Y.Y. Jacobson is going to be He's speaking on yeshiva.net. He always does, usually, actually. Um, he speaks every morning at 7.30. I've been posting it. And um, and he, he's doing something, let's say, Shabbat as well. So look at yeshiva.net. And I'm sure there's going to be other things posted. Um, I think there's a women's ga a gathering as well. Let's say, Shabbat, your time. Um, and I'll be posting my uh, video, God willing. be able to see that as well and i hope to see you guys next week we'll try to, if there's a specific time that's better for you end of the week and an amazing shabbat and um we'll see maybe tomorrow i'll hop on live if i have time if you want to join me maybe on facebook and we'll we'll say some words of inspiration on the parsha and i uh i really thank you so much for being here have an amazing amazing night and may hashem bless you in all your endeavors may we see mashiach titkenu berachamim gdolim bekarov and be able to see each other in person at the rebuilding of the Bet HaMikdash here in Yerushalayim of Nuya. Thank you all for joining. Laila Tov. <laughs>